Downtown living doesn't always require being a resident of a big city. Even in the outer suburbs, there's growing demand for small living spaces, a vibrant restaurant scene, and easy access to public transportation. Forget your manicured lawns and three-car garages, it seems this high-density approach is catching on. In our ongoing focus on development, WGBH News reporter Stephanie Lydon shows us how one local community is embracing smart growth to revitalize its town center. Downtown Franklin's architectural centerpiece for many years was an eyesore, a complex of old warehouses. You can see from these photos the buildings were falling apart. But a developer named John Marini saw something else, potential. I decided that it would be uh, would do nice as a little retail space and some condos. Marini, a longtime home builder, operates on experience and instinct, which told him that even here on the edge of Route 495, there's a demand for downtown living. The house with the picket fence is now going to be just for kids, with, uh, families with a lot of children. But other than that, we find that people have all downsize them and come with the smaller units. His plan to redevelop the warehouses and a closed down movie theater into restaurants, stores, office space, and condominiums. Four buildings in all, and a key ingredient just steps from the commuter rail. It's the kind of dense development planners call smart growth. Ideally, it cuts down on cars, increases foot traffic, reinvigorates neglected neighborhoods. That was the plan for Franklin, except not everyone liked it. Traffic, high density, they didn't want that many people in one place. Getting zoning approvals took three years. Some of the people who didn't want it put up a fight. But eventually, the Franklin Center Commons project was built. Condos and new stores in this building. On the block where the movie theater once stood, Franklin's first five-star bistro. A former furniture warehouse is now an office building. This new condominium building used to be a parking lot. They brought this side of downtown back to life. Realtor Eileen Mason credits the Smart Growth Project with attracting more development, like this theater now under construction. She says the downtown condos are sold out. We have people that are interested. They're calling every week looking to see if they can buy a condo down here. Other things here, a picture and... Bob and Ann Barry are about to move in. They sold their house in Walpole, came here because of the location. It's convenient to the post office, to the banks, to the shopping areas, to restaurants and everything. It's like living in Boston. <laughs> Without the traffic? Without the traffic, <laughs> yeah. Town Administrator Jeff Nutting says smart growth has been good for his community's tax base. A single family home in Franklin is a loss leader for the town because if you pay $5,200 in taxes and you put two children in the school at $12,000 each, we lose money every time a house gets built. Condominiums are actually, uh, we make money because of the lack of children. Along with new tax revenue, the town has new zoning and a hope that more development is on the way. This has been great for the town. I think I think they're getting up. And you know something that hasn't created any much traffic jams. It hasn't created it just it's just created action in the city and right downtown. And that's what people need. Experience plus intuition in this town, it added up to smart growth. And worth noting in Franklin, most of those condos, or all of those condos actually, are two bedrooms. Some kids in the complex, but we're told it's mainly downsizers, people leaving behind the big house, leaving behind the cars in some cases, and opting for a lifestyle close to the restaurants and public transportation. Well, Stephanie, I remember a couple of years ago, several years ago, during the economic downturn when the Natick collection sprang up, the condo development right above the Natick Mall, and everybody thought that was the way that we were going. Half of those didn't sell right away, and I'm sure it soured people so so is this happening after those two examples? Is this happening anywhere else in the state? It is. It's happening in communities all around greater Boston. Uh, in some communities, uh, it's, it's being welcomed. In others, there's more resistance. I mean, there is concern about changing the character of the community, about a lot of housing units being added and that taxing schools and other town services. And as you saw in Franklin, uh, there is a concern um, about the zoning laws. Well, the concern from the developers because they've got to get over that hurdle in order to create these developments. All right, well, Stephanie Lydon, thank you for that report. You're welcome. And so what sort of opportunities do smart growth developments offer? I'm joined by Mark Drazen of the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, a regional planning agency that serves the Metro Boston area. Welcome. 
Thanks a lot. So as Stephanie just mentioned, I mean, in the couple that we just saw in her piece, they're looking to downsize. But this also sounds like it's uh, uh, changing how we live. So is it primarily retiring boomers who are moving into these these developments? Or is it like the cities where you find younger people who just want these small spaces but vibrant local area communities? You know, Jared, it's a great mix of both. Uh, we see those. We see the boomers uh, selling their homes. Those single family homes can then be available to families with more kids and they move to an area uh, like Franklin, uh, like downtown Franklin. We also see young families who want to rent or start out owning a condo before they move to a larger house. And surprisingly, we see a lot of those younger families who have one or two children and stay put and say, well, we're going to stay in the condo or rental market for another five or six or seven years. There's a fundamental change in what people are looking for these days. It used to be people would want to live and work far apart and spend plenty of time in their car. And, that's not what people want it's anymore. It's almost like you're describing the Mad Men era, you know, <laughs> a, a different way of commuting that seems to be going well, on. Well, that's before my time. But, uh, <laughs> but now people want to be able to do lots of things in one place. Sure, they have their car and they'll drive to places, but they want to be able to bike places. They want to be able to walk places. They'd like to live and work and play and go to school relatively near uh, each of those activities. So how much is this actually catching on? And I can only imagine that uh, with the zoning issues that we also saw in that piece, that this isn't something that people are quick to jump on because they assume that it's going to bring a whole host of headaches, yeah. changing the character, as Stephanie just mentioned, changing traffic patterns mm -hmm. and, 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 and taxing schools and other infrastructure yeah. when you suddenly have a high density population in an area that was a former parking lot. Well, there are always the naysayers, but I think really what you're describing is something of about 10 years ago. Right now, I see more and more local officials like Jeff Nutting and great developers like John Marini, whom I've known for many years, uh, and people are following them. People recognize that in many suburban communities, the population is aging fast. The boomers are growing older. They're retiring. We're going to see 1.5 million members of the baby boom generation in eastern Massachusetts retire in the next 24 years. And a lot of those town leaders, the people on planning boards and town meetings, they say, you know, we got to do something to keep this town vibrant. It can't be entirely uh, the older set. We need, of course, senior citizens, but we need families with children. We need young people. We need to be able to find a place that our local uh, town employees can actually afford to live. And increasingly, this kind of smart growth, especially in downtown locations, is really catching on. How much of this is actually driven by traffic? This was something that I was reading about mm -hmm. today and looking at the smart growth, that, that people really are fed up with driving in this area. People are sick of it. People are sick of spending an hour and a half to get to work and then an hour and a half to get home. And all of the time, you know, they see almost $4 gas coming out of their tailpipes while they're going nowhere. Uh, you know, the change doesn't affect everybody. But increasingly, we see that people just don't want to be in the car so much. They'd rather be at home having dinner. They'd rather be out at a theater. A lot of them would even rather be at work than commuting. What does this mean for the rest of the market? I was also looking at a study today that came out of Harvard that mm -hmm. showed that home sales have been dropping over the last decade. So are we now seeing a shift in the way that we live in this state, especially when we have these conversations about losing part, you know, parts of our population and population right. growth declining? Um, but is this going to have an, an impact on the rest yeah. of real estate? Well, population in eastern Massachusetts is growing. It's growing slowly, but it is not declining. I want to be clear about that. Uh, and we it, project, well, yeah, what I meant to say is yeah, not growing at the same pace as other areas of the country. No, that's definitely the case, much slower than California or the West or, or the South or places like that. Uh, but we will still need more homes. We need about 435,000 new homes, actually, in Massachusetts between 2010 and 2040. One of the reasons for that is that the size of the household continues to go down. And so we still need more homes. Uh, you know, most people still want that single family home at some point in their lives, but they don't want it as soon and they don't want it as long. And builders have to build for that new uh, taste. And communities, if they want to keep growing and be vibrant, uh, need to zone for that new taste. And that's one of the things we're really trying to help them to do. All right, well, Mark Grayson, it's fascinating to think of everything changing out there, almost uh, hearkening to the past, though, in the way that we're building around little communities. Um, as I know that there's this conversation about Shopper's World going back in Framingham, going back to the same model. And, and well, Sometimes uh, the past is the future. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.